Hello, my name is Satyendra Bakale. I am a designer based in Amsterdam. Uh, I come from India. Uh, uh, been working in now internationally, different kind of places. Uh, grew up in India and work from Amsterdam. I think it's a crazy idea to, to compare a bus and iPhone, uh, but somehow I like it because uh, uh, some of iPhone opens up some kind of imagination uh, within people and I think it's a fascinating idea to kind of provoke uh, whether transportation system could be as fascinating as the iPhone. I think that's a great provocation and I would love to do something like that which has uh, multifaceted usability which gives different kind of options which, ha which is as easy to use as as uh, as iPhone and things like that. I think it could be an interesting idea to do something like that. I think we should stop talking about sustainability because uh, uh, more we talk, probably we're going to make it uh, uninteresting, you know. And if we try to make it forcefully sexy, then I'm very sure that it will be unsexy. So I think the most important thing about such a profound, complex, at the same time fundamental issue like uh, uh, sustainability, it's very important uh, that it should be part of every design project. And it should be so much as part of every design project that we shouldn't be even talking about it. It should be just a basic requirement in every, any given project actually. Because it's a complex topic, there's no standard answer for that and, uh, uh, and we need to find every single time in a way to solution, a proposal, a possibility on a given topic. So we can't make a thumb rule and say, well, by doing this is going to be sustainable, you know. So to avoid all those traps, I think we have to just make it as a mindset and forget about the, the rest of the stuff. I think uh, to cultivate a sense of belonging in any place, uh, let alone city, I think is a very, very important thing. Uh, how people, citizens, can feel a sense of belonging, that they belong there. Uh, also, the cities, I think, should have some kind of a human scale. Otherwise, they become extremely large and people don't relate to those things. And probably that could be one of the reasons to, to make it more, more sustainable in some sense. Uh, if you feel a sense of belonging, then, then it's not... Uh, it's, it's an extension of uh, amplifying your emotion, actually. So if, if you have a sense of belonging in a certain place, I'm sure you will feel, uh, you, 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 get, you get excited, you get encouraged by the place and uh, you really enjoy life in that sense. And I hope if, you have a, if, you, if one could cultivate that sense of belonging in a place uh, or a city, uh, hopefully it amplifies the life as well. Necessarily, it's 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 a different thing. I mean, we have to also understand what we mean by culture. If if we just say going to opera is just the culture, then I don't think so. I think if we really understand culture in its profound human way, that that means the way of living itself is a culture. In that sense, yes. Uh, but then we really have to go back to a basic way of life. And if that is something fascinating, profound. Uh, then obviously it will enrich the cultural life as well. I think if people feel involved, if people feel connected, if people feel some kind of uh, engagement, uh, then it's a natural extension that uh, the cultural information, exchange of ideas and things spread naturally and organically. And I think that involvement, sense of belonging, is something very important actually. And unfortunately, many places people don't have that sense of belonging. I'm very optimistic and I'm, I really think, yes indeed, it, it, it can be sustainable with the historic as well as contemporary personal stories. I mean, it is not uh, uh, certain, but there are certain uh, wonderful examples I can think of arriving in Stockholm city and uh, seeing all the faces of the people you know, they say, welcome to my city with their portrait, you know, with Eros photo and Thomas uh, Sandal's photo. I think that's an interesting thing to, to make it more personalized. And if we could uh, really capture that human side of a city, 
and somehow uh, create part of the story of a city. Uh, I think it could be a fascinating thing uh, that we can sustain these stories as well as it can help the city. This is a big, big error we did all over the world uh, under the name of progress. Uh, we, we divorce life from work and entertainment from other things. We, we, we built up city centers as if you go uh, to those city centers to work and then go somewhere else to enjoy life. I think that fragmentation of understanding of way of life uh, is, a, is, a, is a big problem in this kind of scenario. And, and the, the, the sad situation is even today, uh, in Europe, in Asia, as well as in North America, I see projects where these things are still happening, and that is shocking. Uh, I think, hopefully, I'm very optimistic that things will improve, and people will understand and will not separate these things. Now, in today's context, uh, the, the technology allows us to do that very effortlessly, and I hope that reflects in architecture sooner than later. Again, if you look at the, the, the scenario around the world, unfortunately, uh, uh, you see greed all over. Uh, but at the same time, I'd like to see optimistic examples as well. There are also quite some interesting examples, humanitarian examples, where generosity had played a great role. And I hope, uh, with the possibilities we have to connect people, uh, uh, from various geographies and exchange knowledge, share knowledge, uh, get all kind of ideas together. Hopefully, uh, we could create more generous possibilities, actually. And, and I hope that happens more and more. We uh, definitely uh, would like to visualize a skyline of a city like that. Uh, I think a uh, city like that has to be a compact. First of all, it has to have a human scale. Uh, it has to have a kind of a network thinking, a kind of a system thinking, where the basic common denominator, the basic facilities, what we all need to have, sanitation, energy supply, uh, water supply, those kind of things, they need to be thought out so systematically and so fantastically that that becomes the, the, the basic network of a city in a very given situation. And from that, we could create the, create the possible different scenarios, actually. And, and that, I, I hope sooner than later, we create those examples, actually. There are not many examples where that system, systematic thinking has happened at a very fundamental system level, at a network level, there, that all these resources are put together and thought through to begin with, and then put them together in a, in a way that we can, we can create a new city. Uh, respecting and things and the mistakes we made and learning from the mistakes we made for all these years and the kind of knowledge we cultivate and apply it in a proper way actually and I and unfortunately we don't have many opportunities as yet uh, as a plan new cities but there are few other opportunities in Asia for example where the planned new cities are happening and they happen a lot in 50s but I hope we don't make the mistakes they did in 50s and do something fantastic.